Hi folks, Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about a new and exciting book, Spatial Citizenship Education, from two of my favorite people, Eung Shin and Sarah Bednars, with contributions from many authors all over the world. Let's take a look at this important book. Thanks. A spatially literate citizenry must begin with young, spatially literate learners capable of using technology and non-technical approaches to identify, explore, and solve problems in thoughtful, critical ways. Here's the table of contents of this book. Hence, these statements being said, I believe that GIS, spatial thinking, critical thinking, the problem solving, etc. that can be done with using geographic information systems is perfect for developing this spatial citizenship that is talked about in this book. So we're not talking about citizenship in terms of some legal document that allows you or permits you to be a citizen of a country. We're talking about being a global citizen here, being a wise steward of our natural resources. Consuming information here in this book is critical at a rapid but a shallow method or rate. That's a concern raised by the authors. The authors also raise issues of knowledge, skills, and attitudes. And I say with GIS, students are actually learning about all three of those things. They're gathering data, they're mapping it, they're analyzing it, they're presenting it, and they're communicating about it. They're also using exciting new technologies. For example, ArcGIS Hub in engaging citizenry looking at everything from cracked sidewalks in communities to graffitis to potholes to invasive species to water quality to weather and much more. Also in this book are issues of equity, justice, environmental stewardship, and space, place, scale, power, human environment relationships, they're all bound up in this notion of spatial citizenship. The book also makes a strong case for why we need to be incorporating education on these important topics in a variety of dis different disciplines, not just geography or environmental studies, but in civics, in history, in economics, in mathematics, in language arts, and in other fields. Also, the book's authors recognize that spatial citizenship is entangled in a, a social, cultural, and political world that we live in, one that's rapidly changing. The book is also practical. So for example, in the GIS or Geographic Information Systems chapters, we talk about teaching with GIS in the book. My, my colleagues talk about problem solving, inquiry, examples. Examples I've used in the past, for example, cotton production versus rainfall. And that's mentioned in the book as well. Why do we grow cotton where we do? Should we be growing it where we do? So issues of irrigation versus precipitation. Also, median age versus median income. It matters. Scale matters. These relationships change at different scales. Why do they change? And also, field tools are mentioned in the book. And I've got one, for example, on walkability. How walkable is your community? And finally, despite the plethora of maps and mappable data, embedded throughout the book, which I really appreciate, is a little bit of a thread of be critical of the data, right? Understand where that data came from and be critical of it. Use it, n recognize its challenges and its limitations, but also recognize its benefits. So use it appropriately and make wise decisions based on data, mapped data included. Thanks, and I encourage you to check out this book, Spatial Citizenship Education by Routledge and some of my finest and favorite colleagues. Thanks.